Hi folks, and welcome to the Meaningful Money Podcast. This is Season 15, Episode 2. This is the podcast dedicated to helping you put your finances in order. My name is Pete Matthew, and I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. I'm here to help you make sense of money. Here we are once again. Great to have you with me. And this is episode two in the new season, season 15 of the Meaningful Money podcast. And this season is called Planning with Purpose. It's designed for those who are well established on their journey towards financial independence. But if we're talking about planning, I think we better define what we mean by that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. After the main body of the show, as usual, I'll read out a review that's been left, discuss what we're going to be talking about next time, some news about the Academy as well, so stay tuned for that. But before any of that, remember, this podcast continues to be brought to you with the help of my good friends at Seven Investment Management. They've been helping me out here since the spring of 2011, which is amazing, shows incredible commitment on their behalf, and I certainly couldn't have built this to what it is without their help. So please do check out what they're up to. They're at 7im.co.uk. That's the number 7im.co.uk. And don't forget the Meaningful Money branded self-investment platform, which they have built, meaningfulmoney.tv slash podcast invest for everything you need to know about that very interesting subject. Okay, so planning is essentially about knowing where you're going and then deciding on the steps you need to take to get there. And given we're talking about financial planning here, there's likely to be some maths involved, and there is, so get excited about that together, shall we? More importantly, I think we need to be on the same page, you and I, so that we can move forward together in this season. And when I use phrases like timelines and events and transitions and things like that, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so remember, notes, links, and there's some good links today. They're all at the show notes, which is the only link you need to remember. So if you're out and about watching this, not watching this, you're probably not out and about. If you're listening to this out and about, then it's the only link you need to remember. You don't need to write it down. Dead easy, okay? Meaningfulmoney.tv slash PP2. PP2 for Planning with Purpose, Episode 2. Meaningfulmoney.tv slash PP2. Everything you need is there. Let's dive in and talk about what you need to know first. Okay, still having jit with my EFPs. <laughs> I think I need to work out a better system because it's driving me nuts, but never mind. So first thing you need to know is that life is a journey. Life is a journey and there are points of interest along the way. So I introduced this whole season last week and I talked about the long middle. What I meant by that is that there's usually a clear beginning to our financial journey where we begin to take an interest in financial matters right? Usually there's some kind of awakening at some point. And of course, there's a logical end goal, which is usually retirement, financial independence, or however you want to call it. That journey for most of us is a long one, right? But fortunately, it's not like one of those American highways through the desert, you know, just a straight road, nothing on either side for hundreds of miles. Maybe you pass one other car every couple of hours. It's not like that. Life is actually much more interesting than this full of what we might call transitions or pivotal moments that might require us to assess where we're going financially as well as all the other stuff. So that might be a career change or a promotion, new relationship or a breakup, starting a family or losing a parent, receiving an inheritance, suffering a bankruptcy, all kinds of things, many of them less significant than those, but all kinds of points of interest, if you like, along that journey but which will require you to take stock of where you are financially. That little noise was one of my lights falling over. I'm not going to worry about it. Now, so life is a journey, and there's points of interest along the way. Now, on that journey, second thing you need to know, really financial products are not that important. All right? Notice that when I was describing your wealth building journey just then, I didn't talk about products once. By products, I mean insurance policies, pensions, ISAs, funds, trusts, wills, all that sort of stuff. While the financial services industry likes to place a great deal of store on those things, really they're of minor significance, relatively minor significance in the grand scheme of things. Whether or not you reach your desired end goal, actually that's a combination of maths, unknowable market machinations, behavior, and time. 
So whether or not you have 10% or 20% of your investment allocation to UK equities, those sorts of details really have little or no bearing, in my view, right? And certainly you probably can't predict what impact those things will have. So the best guess is not to bother. On many occasions in the history of this podcast, I spent time explaining how products work, obviously, and why one might be better than another in any given situation. Long-time listeners know that, actually, I believe that this aspect of financial planning is very simple. But folks in this planning with purpose phase of life, they'll already have a pretty good handle on all that, on the practicalities of wealth building. So instead, I think we need to be talking about and discussing the larger factors at play. It really isn't about whether you choose a pension or an ISA. Yes, it'll have a bearing, but in the grand scheme of things, it's relatively minor. Third thing I think we need to do is to, need to know rather, is to understand the paradigm of a timeline, okay? We need to establish this paradigm of how to think about this journey so that we're all kind of picturing things in the same way. Um, so I need to introduce you to this concept of a timeline. So there's an example timeline at the show notes that you can download. So <laughs> for those of you who are more visual, and I've got to try and describe this over audio, um, that'll help you, <laughs> hopefully. So maybe press pause, download that now so you can follow along. Now, I'm going to try and describe it clearly enough, however, so that anybody without the example in front of them can also get some kind of a sense of what I'm thinking. So imagine a simple two-axis graph. Along the horizontal axis at the bottom is time measured in full years. Now, when I'm planning for a client, I use tax years because that just makes sense. And I suggest that you do the same. So when I'm creating one of these timelines for a client, I label each tax year with the age that the clients will attain in that tax year. Now, I always extend their access to age 100 because generally I'm uh, spending a lot of our time, obviously, here at Jackson's planning for clients into their retirement. Probably, I'll mention this later on, you probably don't need to extend your timeline quite that long. Um, up the vertical axis on the left, then, uh, the scale, if you like, is in pounds, pence, pounds sterling. Against that axis, what we're going to do is measure our expenses. The idea is that in each year, we need to understand what our expenses will be. Obviously, that's easy to work out for the current year, maybe for next year. Further out than that, though, we're in the realm of assumptions and also calculations for things like inflation. More on that in a minute. So I'm going to suggest that you create your own personal timeline uh, as we go through this. Now, along the bottom of the chart, on our timeline, remember we got years along the bottom there, there's going to be key points along the way. So maybe your daughter is five years old now. 13 years from now, you might want to make a mark on that timeline that uh, she may go to university. Okay? If you're planning to buy a house in five years' time, mark that on the timeline at the relevant point. Really, these are life's events uh, or transitions. Some we can look forward to and maybe anticipate. Some we won't know they're coming until they slap us in the face. So we need to put on our timeline the ones that we do know about. So what about expected life events like career changes or maybe the sale of a business or a property? Well, you can try to populate your timeline with those things, the ones that you can foresee. Certainly won't be a complete picture but this is going to be a living, breathing plan, something that you come back to and update as life goes on. Now, as our timeline extends into the future, and we don't know for sure what the future holds, we're going to need to make some assumptions about that. So the fourth thing we need to know is what assumptions we're going to use as we calculate things going forward. There's not many that you need to uh, sort of have in mind, just a few. First is inflation. This is a key factor, really. It works against you, obviously, as things get more expensive uh, each year. So you could choose any figure for any of these that you want. But I set inflation to be 3%. All right? It's a reasonable long-term average. It's obviously been a lot higher than that. It's been a bit lower than that. 3% seems right to me. Choose your own number. You might also want to think about the inflation rate on, say, your earnings. So does your salary go up by 3% each year? Your public sector worker, probably not, all right? How about uh, rental income? If you've got a property, do you put the rent up by 3% every year or by the rate of inflation? Probably not, all right? So I tend to use the same inflation rate for everything. Very often with rental income with the clients, I use a lower rate of inflation for that because people are not very good at putting up rents each year. So inflation, a key factor. Pick a figure, I tend to use 3%. Then we need to assume what return we're going to get on our savings, that is money held in bank or building societies. 
So it's the amount of interest, really. And I set that to be 1%. That's a little bit ambitious, really. But you can get 1% uh, without too much difficulty. Some people are saying, well, I can get 3% on my monthly saver. It's like, yes, you can if you're happy to, you know, go through the hassle of moving money around every month or whatever. That's absolutely fine. Keep your assumptions simple and keep them low as well, right? Let's be on the conservative side. So 1% I use for cash. Of course, if we're using a 1% return and a 3% inflation, that's actually a minus 2% return on our cash, isn't it? 1 minus 3 is minus 2. And as we know, you lose money by keeping it in the bank. We need to set an assumption for investment returns as well. That's money held in investments and pensions. So that's, well, I tend to set that to be 5%. Sometimes um, I sort of consider adjusting it down to 4.5%. We can change them, of course, once we've set them. We can play with them a little bit. But we're going to need to take a view on these for now right at outset. So just take a view and write them down, okay? So hopefully in your head or you're looking at the example, you've got some kind of a picture of a timeline, with years along the bottom and we're going to look at expenses and stuff in a minute in each year that's what will go up the vertical axis axis access axis is what i mean okay so we've got some kind of idea timeline you've got events on that timeline as well again download the example to make it a little bit clearer so with that in mind let's have a look at what we need to do this week the first thing you need to do, obviously is you need to map out your own timeline you are unique and so you need to um map out your own particular version two axes then timeline along the bottom expenditure up the vertical now if you're in this planning for purpose life stage i would just run the timeline to your desired retirement or fi age rather than deep into retirement or to age 100 as i do for um, my clients for us the goal really at this point if we're in this planning with purpose stage the goal is financial independence i imagine for most of us so as you approach that point, yeah, you're going to need to extend your timeline into retirement. But for now, don't try to think too far ahead. I mean, if you're 30 or 40 even, planning a timeline for the next 15, 20 years is far enough, much further out than that. And tiny differences in the early years can lead to big differences at the far end of the chart and uh, can be misleading. So we need to be careful about that. So along the bottom of your chart, then on the, on the timeline axis, there's going to be key points along the way. So, you know, that uh, if your daughter's five years old, 13 years from now, she can go uh, to um, university, mark it on. If you want to buy a house, mark it on. Dream ahead a little bit, maybe. Would you like to uh, maybe go on a major holiday at some point? All right, five years' time. Family holiday for six weeks, something like that. Or a big holiday. It doesn't have to be long. It can just be big, you know, Disneyland or whatever. Ten grand worth of holiday plan it in, put it on your timeline as to when you would like to do that. Maybe a little mini retirement, take three months sabbatical from work, take a cruise, maybe a dream car purchase, doesn't matter, it's your life, right? If you've got things which you think are going to be major sort of expense items, because these things are going to cost you, hotels, cars, cruises, all that sort of stuff, put them on the timeline. Then think about expected life events, like career changes, maybe, if you're thinking about that, or a promotion. Some of us have fairly clear promotional paths, particularly, you know, if you're in the police service or whatever, then, you know, you might have a sense, well, I will make it to inspector by such and such a point, right? So mark these things on. Maybe you own a business and you might sell it one day. Mark a potential time when, might that, uh, when that might happen. Just try to populate your timeline with events or transitions that you can foresee. The big one, of course, is going to be FI or retirement, financial independence for the uninitiated. Where would you like that to be on your timeline? Is it age 55? Is it age 65? We might need to tweak that. <laughs> and we'll get to that next week because it may end up being unrealistic. But where would you like it to be? Mark it on uh, the timeline. So this is not going to be a complete picture, but it doesn't matter. You can come back to it and update it. In fact, I suggest that you do update it every year as part of your annual review, but we'll get to that in episode seven of this season. So looking ahead there. So build your own timeline with some key events that you can foresee. Second thing you need to do is to total up your expenses, and this part is a little bit less fun, let's be honest. So we need to spend some time, if you haven't already, identifying your expenses, because we need to add them to each year on our timeline. So you know that the first step to financial success is to spend less than you earn, right? Of course you do. You've been listening for ages. 
So by now, though, if you're in the planning with purpose stage, you're well established with budgeting and savings habits, right? You're consciously looking for ways either to spend less or to earn more, to free up more money to be uh, saved for the future. So start now, right? Really important as we go through this, you need to think about now first always. So start with the current year. What are your basic minimum monthly costs? So we're talking mortgage, rent, um, household costs like utilities and things like that, food, travel to work, right? Those are your basics, right? No luxuries. We're not talking gym memberships or Sky or Netflix or subscriptions, anything like that. Only the stuff that you would absolutely need to pay in order to survive, right? On top of that, then you can add in those extras. So we're striking a clear divide between required and desired expenses. Now, finally, give some thought to some one-off or short-term costs. So they might be linked to events in your timeline, like your daughter's university career. So maybe you think, well, okay, I'll probably be sending her 500 quid a month for nine months of the year, right? For maybe four years, if she goes to university for four years. 500 times nine months of the year, that's four and a half grand a year for each of the four years that she'll be there, right? Or maybe you want to spend 30 grand on a camper van in the year that you hit FI, right? We're now starting to link expenditure amounts to timeline events, but we have a problem. The problem is, is that we need to factor in inflation. So this is the third thing we need to do is to factor in inflation. You see, we can only think in today's money. Right? We can only think in today's money unless you're some mathematical savant. You cannot get your head around what uh, the impact inflation will have over time. Now, over a year or two, inflation won't have much impact at all, some but not a lot. But if you're working out what 500 quid a month will be in 13 years' time when your daughter does go to university, most of us can't do that kind of sum in our heads. Today's money is the only money that makes sense to us. Ask anybody who bought a house in the 1970s and they'll tell you a story or two about inflation, right? Today's house prices are just nuts in comparison. Now, fortunately, the maths isn't that complex. Now, you need to work out an inflation factor, okay? What you multiply today's money by to work out what it'll be uh, in X number of years time, okay? So you might need a scientific calculator, you might need an Excel spreadsheet, but I've actually created a dead simple calculator anybody can use, it uses Google Sheets, it's free. Link in the show notes, literally click through to it, it'll ask you if you wanna create a copy, just click yes, and you can easily just put in the numbers. The formula for those who are interested is one plus the rate of inflation to the power of the number of years. All right, so let's say your inflation rate is 3%. Add one to that, and you get 1.03, because 3% is 0 0.03. All right, so if you add one to it, you get 1.03. 7% inflation will be 1.07. 10% inflation will be 1.10, okay? Then to work out the inflation factor over, say, 13 years, you multiply your 1.03 by itself, and you do that 13 times. So in other words, 1.03 to the power of 13. So you'll find that that figure is 1.468, and that is your inflation factor. So if you're thinking about sending 500 quid a month in today's terms to your daughter, right, when she goes to university in 13 years' time, you take that 500 quid a month, and if you inflate that by our inflation factor of 1.468, that actually equals 734 pounds a month, okay? So you think, flipping heck, 734 pounds a month. That sounds a lot. But of course, it's the same as 500 quid a month in today's money, assuming our inflation rate bears out. So when your five-year-old daughter goes to university in 13 years' time, you're not going to be sending her 500 quid a month. You're going to be sending her 734 pounds a month. Make sense? Clear as mud, Pete. <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to need to do this math for every expense that you've got and for every year in your plan. So... If your basic living expenses are, say, 1,500 quid a month, that's 18,000 pounds per year this year. Now, if we've assumed inflation at 3%, next year it's going to be 18,000 multiplied by 1.03. That's 18,540 if you're interested. The year after that, it's going to be 18 grand multiplied by 1.03 squared because it's two years hence, right? It's going to get fun, isn't it? We're having fun, folks. <laughs> You're either going to need to get sort of uh, friendly with Excel or Google Sheets, 
or you can have some sort of dedicated software to do the heavy lifting for you. Many of you uh, bought into Paul Armson's Envision Your Money software. That'll do this compounding work for you. Um, I'm going to be including the industry-leading Voyant Go software into Meaning, uh, Meaningful Academy with the launch of Phase 2, and that's coming very soon. Okay, This Phase 2 founders launch is going to be 23rd of September. There, I've said it now. <laughs> I've got to stick to it. 23rd of September for Phase 2 uh, for the founders launch. So if you want in, you need to get on the mailing list, MeaningfulAcademy.com to do that. But software can help you with this stuff. But as it happens, I've created a spreadsheet to do it, all right? Go to the show notes for that. But the whole point of this process is to get you thinking about what you need to spend in each year of your plan, all right? So that we have a cash flow for each year, money in and money out. We'll get to money in very shortly, right? We're looking for a cash flow, money in versus money out in each year so that we can work out whether we're getting richer each year or not, okay? So the fourth thing we need to do is to add in our incomes. We've talked about expenses, what's going out in each year. Now, in exactly the same way, we're going to need to factor in income. So I suggest that you use net income for this, unless you also want to do the income tax calculations, right? Uh, again, Voyant Go, the software we're including as part of the academy, will do all the tax calcs for you. It's very cool. So if your net income, say, is 2,700 quid a month, well, that's £32,400 net per year in the current year. You're going to need to apply inflation to that for each year in the plan, all right? So if your income is likely to step up due to, say, a promotion or a pay rise, you're going to need to factor this in too, all right? So maybe you just use your inflation factor for the next five years, but then you're expecting a promotion, so you'll need to jump up your salary at that point. Work out what somebody on the level that you're going to be promoted to is earning now and inflate that forward five years and then start with that figure then and inflate that forward by inflation for each year after that okay so um yeah that, that makes sense i'm just going to sort of say that again but again the calculator will help you do the inflation stuff so maybe you're planning a career break or a reduction in your hours for a period of time perhaps to see your kids into primary school take a look at your timeline all right and think right okay what's my income going to be in each year so if you're thinking of going three days a week in five years' time, you're going to need to work out what three-fifths of your current take-home pay is and inflate that five years into the future, okay? We're on a very fine line between people going, flipping it, <laughs> I can't my head around this, I'm walking the dog. But hopefully the spreadsheet and the example timeline will give you some idea of how I'm thinking, okay? So go to the show notes, meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp2 for uh, <laughs> hopefully some guidance on this. Finally, uh, we just need to note the difference between our income and expenses, okay? So while you're still working, obviously, there should be an excess of income over ex expenditure. So obviously, that excess is the money that we're going to spend. Uh, sorry, we're going to save it over time. <laughs> not going to spend it. That's not the idea. We're going to save it over time to meet our financial goals. We're going to apply the growth rates that we're assuming in our plan, try and work out what those savings will add up to in the future. That's fairly simple maths. If we know we've got X amount of income, and so much going out, that excess we need to add to our balances in our investments or pensions or whatever in that year, and then apply growth factors, okay? More on that in the coming weeks. And that's I think, is probably enough for today. <laughs> so we are going to take it on next week. Think about setting some goals using our timeline paradigm. There is a bit more math involved next week, but no more than you've done today. And again, I'll be providing uh, sort of spreadsheets to help you do it. I realize this could come across as a bit heavy, but if you're used to tracking investments, optimizing saving rates and stuff like that, this should be no problem for you, okay? Uh, it will help you in your financial planning, shall we say, to familiarize yourself with Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, um, but I have created a version for you, right? So go and have some fun with that. Grab it at the show notes, okay? Meaningfulmoney.tv slash pp2. We'll continue this discussion next week. Okay, a uh, quick review from Barry Bumble. <laughs> Barry Bumble. Changing our lives. It's no lie to say that this podcast is changing mine and my husband's lives for the better. I only discovered the joy of podcasts last year and with it the FIRE community and then this excellent podcast providing honest and straightforward information on how everybody can take control of their finances. We're opening our first Stocks and Chairs ISAs later this month. Come on, well done. And I don't think we would have had the confidence to do that if it weren't for this podcast. So thank you, Pete. You are a star. Thank you, Barry Bumble. Really appreciate you leaving a review. Keep going. You've got the bug now, right? Keep going. Take it on, and uh, your future is going to be very bright. 
Okay, if you like what you hear on the show here and want to leave me a review, meaningfulmoney.tv slash iTunes. If you're of an Apple persuasion, uh, if not, then wherever you're listening to me, please, if you can leave a review, do so. It really, really helps. Okay, now I mentioned the uh, Meaningful Academy Founders launch a little bit earlier. <clears throat> so that's happening on the 23rd of September. So to just put a little bit of meat on the bones for that, I'm going to be looking at uh, finding 100 people to help me shape the content and the tools in there to be the very best that they can be. So we've been doing that with the uh, getting started phase where we're talking about budgeting and insurance and getting out of debt and stuff like that. This is now the building wealth phase that we're going to open for founders on the 23rd of September. So highlights in phase two are going to be definitely the Voyant Go license. That's going to be included from one year for one year from sign up and then it'll be annually reviewable at a fairly nominal cost after that. That software is going to be worth the price of the Academy alone. It really is fantastic, but there's way more to it than that. I'm folding in and updating my Learn How to Invest course. So that will give you all the tools you need to choose which funds you should have in your pension, say, all right, or your ISA or whatever. And there's going to be worksheets and guides on how to review that, how to review your insurance program in light of changing circumstances, all that sort of stuff. Everything you need, basically, to build wealth in the most efficient and effective way for your future, right? So head over to MeaningfulAcademy.com if you haven't already. Make sure you're on the mailing list because it's an email that will go out first with the link to sign up for the Founders Launch. It's going to be 100 people only, strictly limited, and you'll get a deep discount because you'll be helping me build it over the next six months, providing feedback and all that sort of stuff as I add new content in. Um, it's working really well with the Founders Launch on the Phase 1, the Getting Started Phase. So I'm getting great feedback from those guys that are in there. And it'll be better for having you involved. But there's only going to be 100 of you let in at that early stage. Okay, MeaningfulAcademy.com. Okay, next time we're going to be talking about setting financial goals. Taking the discussion forward from today should be... <laughs> <laughs> it should be fun if you enjoyed the maths today. You're going to love it next week. Seriously, it's no more complex. All right. <laughs> so that's it for this week, folks. Thank you so much. Feels really good to be back in the rhythm of a season, actually, after a summer of in-between episodes. So I hope you're uh, down with that too and enjoying it. Comments, please leave them at the show notes. Meaningfulmoney.tv slash PP2. All the links to the uh, calculators and stuff are there as well. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next week. 